flesh You're the light that guides me through Our eyes are on you Do I need to the broken Don't we find their strength in you Our eyes are on you
My name is Burt Crow, and I'm just off show pastor here at Journey Church. And at this time of tithing and offering to just have a little bit of scripture I wanted to share with you real quick that I've um, been studying over during the week, my studies. So. It's actually out of Psalm 71, which is a psalm of David, where he's giving praise and memorial to God for what they've done for the nation of Israel. It says, But as for me, I will hope continually, and I will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and of your salvation all day long, for I do not know the sum of them. I will come with the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, have you, you have taught me from my youth and still declare your wondrous deeds. And even when I am old and gray, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to these generations and your power to all who come. And you know, as I think about it, and as I was reading over that, I thought that really is the crux of what we hope to do here through Journey Church. I know in my life, as I get older, I think about the importance of sharing with the next generation, with my children and my children's children, and for generations that I don't even know and won't live to see. In the name of the Lord will be proclaimed throughout the generations and, and the importance of that and you know as you think about your family and you think about those around you when you share with a generation to come you're sharing something that is eternal and you know that's what we should do more of and you know and your giving is used to do that to advance the kingdom and here at this church I know that it's just, it's just very much a part of what we do every day is to share with the next generation and I pray the Lord will allow me to finish with that I finish with sharing to the next generation to come. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us, for salvation and for your giving to us abundantly and overflowing. And Lord, I pray that, that what we have, what we've learned from you, the word that you've given us and placed in our hearts, that we'll be more than willing to share with the next generation and the next generation and the generation after that for as long as we will live. We will proclaim your name. Lord, I just ask you now to take whatever's offered here and use it to your blessing and to your glory for the advancement of your kingdom. And Lord, that we will give you the praise and honor that you deserve for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.
sing this in faith we say your love is everlasting your kindness never ends God you never leave do you believe it your presence knows me for your glory God, a shout of praise if you believe it this morning. Come on. Good morning, Journey Church. We're glad that you're here. Look to somebody that's sitting around you and tell at least two people good morning. Go ahead, talk to somebody this morning. Tell them good morning. Hey, we're glad that you're here to, to worship with us. This is uh, week two in our new facility, also week two in our new series called uh, All Things New, and he is making all things new. So we're excited about where God has taken us on this journey and where he's preparing us as we continue to grow in him and look to the future and where God is, is taking us on this journey from out on highway uh, or over on 22, uh, uh, 20th Street, sorry, over to Tiff Avenue where we are now. Had to get my bearing straight for just a moment. And speaking of that, I want to go ahead and make this announcement to you. Next weekend, uh, next Saturday, I believe at 8 o'clock, we're having a yard sale over at our old facility to get rid of everything that did not come with us and so if you just want to give you the heads up on that if you're interested in any of that there's a lot of things that did not move, make the move and uh, we'll be having that next weekend to just to give you the heads up so you know about it uh, we have a couple of things to celebrate this morning while we're here to worship together God uh, did a great thing last week we had just under 800 people here between both services and uh, seen a lot of great things happen and have a lot to celebrate in that we were making a lot of phone calls this week connecting with people and I think it we calculated around 31 salvations last weekend not including not including baptisms where people had signed up for for, for just baptism that had already been saved and so uh, uh, we're still working and putting all that together for the end of this series October 4th we'll have a huge celebration time and have a baptism service in both of our our services but we serve um, a holy God who is alive and who is faithful to his people as we trust in him that all other religious leaders are dead and in their grave whether it's Muhammad Buddha Confucius or any other their their bones are dried up in the grave but the tomb is empty to the God that we serve look to somebody and tell them the tomb is empty go ahead the tomb is empty you know God sent his son to this earth John 3 16 because the scripture says that he loves us and he's pursuing after us and all through scripture we see how God has been pursuing after his children and and he's pursuing after you and me and and as a result of that God makes all things new Christ makes all things new new people were made new in Christ last weekend as we celebrated together to see uh, people give their life to Christ it says that you are a new what 
a new creation. We looked at that last week. Also, not only a new creation, but Jesus said, I come to bring a new covenant, right? The veil was torn. There's a new covenant. No longer do you have to go to the tabernacle, the holies of holies, but now you can have a direct relationship with God. This is a new way. It's a new covenant. You can have a personal and intimate relationship with God as a result of what Jesus, the price that he paid on the cross. Jesus said, also, I come to bring you a new commandment. Right, to, to love others, to, to love God, to love others as yourself. He, he, he brings this new commandment. And then you can continue in Scripture and see where he says, I want to bring a new heaven and a new earth for us to enjoy. God is a God who makes things new. He's not looking to replace you, as we talked about last week, but he's looking to make you new. And I find that appropriate this morning to look. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Luke chapter 24. And while you're doing that, I want to take a moment and welcome those that are watching online as well. Uh, I, I know we have many people who connect, and sometimes we can have up to 40 or so different viewers that are watching online. So we want to take time to welcome those that are connected in that way. In Luke chapter 24, whether you have a Bible or the Bible app on your phone or iPad or some other device, uh, we're going to camp out here today in this chapter, and we'll read verses 1 and following uh, pretty much all the way down to around verse 35 or so. So let's look at that together. Verse 1, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, uh, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but they entered. when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He's risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Verse 8. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the stripes of uh, linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering of himself what had happened. Verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us what they had seen. They had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not, but they did not see. Verse 25, he said to them, how foolish are you? And how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and he began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, 
There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So this morning as we continue this series, Making All Things New, I want us to see this. It's often our expectations or it's often what you expect that can limit your view to see what God is trying to do in and through your life. We, we all have expectations. You have expectations when you get married. You think this is the way it's going to be or this is what I'm expecting. You have expectations from your kids. You're going to act this way. You're going to do this, right? You have expectations when you go to work. This is the work that you're supposed to perform. This is what I expect to do. This is what I expect to get paid. This is what I expect to happen. Many of you are first-time guests. You walked in. You had expectations. Someone has told you about Journey, whatever it may be, and you walked in with some sense of expectations about what you were looking for. We could go on and on and, and, and talk about our expectations, but the problem is many times our expectations are, are what we think can limit us from being able to see what it is that God is trying to teach you in and through your life because our view tends to be limited by our own, uh, our own desires, our own ways, what, what we're doing, what we want to see happen, and we completely miss out on what God is trying to, trying to teach us. And so we have to guard and make sure our expectations are pure and, and they're, they're, our motives are right in what we want to see happen as we move forward because if we're not careful it can limit us to see what God wants to do in and through us look with me verses 1 through 3 out of 24 it says on the first day of the week very early in the morning the women that took the spices they had prepared to the tomb so they took these spices to prepare because of their expectations what were they expecting to see they were expecting to see the, the, a dead body they were expecting to see the Messiah's body still there so they prepared to go see the body which they thought would still be there so therefore they were bringing the spices they had prepared to the tomb but because their expectations were limited to their own view and what they were looking for they had forgot about what the Messiah had said and, and, and had prepared them for or how about this in verse 21 and 22 talking about expectations or, or our view not being where it needs to be look at verse 21 and 22 and talk and, and let's look at this for just a moment verse 21 he says but we he says we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel and what is more it is the third day since all this took place verse 22 in addition some of our women amazed us because they went to the tomb this morning and, and then he goes on and talks about what they what the women had shared with them about what they had saw but let's go back for just a moment to verse 21 I want you to see the issue here with expectations but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel their view that, that what they expected to see was was off target their own agenda determined what they expected to see that their own agenda Many disciples made this mistake of thinking that the Messiah, that he would recapture the glory days of King David and that he would bring power and prosperity back uh, to Israel and they would be able to enjoy it and only it would be magnified and multiplied even more so than the past. And some of, the, some of the disciples thought that Jesus was going to bring this power back to Israel and this glory and, and recapture the glory days of King David. And that's what they were, were looking for. And that's why they would give their worship to God and they were solely surrendered. And it wouldn't be far-fetched to think that I'm surrendering my life to the God and, and he said he's going he's to rebuild the temple on the third, third day and, and he's going to do this and we're surrendering our life. And now we look at it three days in, he's missing our hope seems to be lost not sure what to do the Romans are oppressing us our Messiah is dead and their hopes for glory seem to be destroyed and they were discouraged because of their expectations were wrong their expectations were in the flesh of what they thought the Messiah should do when Christ not only come to redeem Israel he came to redeem people much bigger picture many times in our life God's trying to do something and all we see is our perspective we we see our old way and God's trying to show us something new and how to surrender it to him that we can see what God is trying to teach us in 
and, and through that, and we must surrender in order that God can give us, because he, he makes all things new, that we can see a new perspective. And, and that's where we are this morning. My prayer is that we, as Christ followers, will always be reminded of the new perspective, not the old perspective. When we surrender our lives to Christ, He makes all things new. And so therefore, we have a new perspective on life. In Luke chapter 24, verses 6 through 8, as we were reading earlier, in verse 6, the Scripture says, He is not here, He's risen. Remember how He told you while He was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and cr be crucified and on the third day be raised again. I want you to get this. Verse 8. In verse 8 it says, Then they, what? They remembered His words. How often is it, for those of you in, the, in, in here this morning that have kids, how often is it we tell our kids to, to do something and like two minutes later they have already forgot. They have no idea what you're talking about. And you have to go and you remind them again. We talked about this. We just talked about this five minutes ago. This is what you need to do. How many of you oftentimes have to remind your kids of these things? Go ahead, raise your hand. All right. All right, you put your hands down. How many of you find yourself oftentimes having to remind your spouse of something? Go ahead. All right, some people's got two hands going up. I see it in the back. Some of you calling your spouses out this morning. Uh, having to remind our spouse. We talked about this. You, you remember this. Well, get this. They had walked with Jesus. They had talked with Jesus. They had been in his presence. He had told them all these things that were going to happen. And yet they lost perspective. And they needed to be reminded to gain new perspective. Then they remembered his words. They remembered, oh yeah, Jesus told us this was going to happen. Oh yeah, this was part of, of the plan. He, he reminded us uh, of this oftentimes. And then they go back and they go and share the story with everyone else saying, this is what we saw, this is what we were told, this is the account of the tomb when we went there and, and, and we were reminded of this. Look at verse 22 through 27, right? In addition, this is the, the guys that are walking along leaving Jerusalem and, and some of the women were amazed and at what they were sharing with us. It says they went out to the tomb early in the morning but didn't find his body and they came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, how foolish are you, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. There again, they're being reminded, did not Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all of the scriptures concerning himself. They need to be reminded. And I'm here this morning to tell you, maybe some of you here need to be reminded. You need to be reminded of what His Word says. You need to be reminded of what God is doing in and through your life. And you need a new perspective. Look to the person beside you and tell them, you need a new perspective. You need to see things the way that God wants you to see them. Because if you're looking, with it, looking at it with the wrong perspective, the old way, you're completely missing it. And it's so easy to go back to the old way, isn't it? It's so easy to get back in the old habits. It's so easy to fall right back into it. I, I know for me personally, you know, I try to, you try to quit drinking the sodas and like you get one soda after you've been like 30 or 40 days and what happens? Like, I mean, it's just like that. You go back in that old habit and you, you crave it and you start wanting it and you have to guard yourselves against those old habits and the flesh and you need to be reminded and see the new perspective and be reminded of what God is doing. The old perspective, for, for the women's perspective here, someone has stole Jesus' body, it's no longer there. But the new perspective is, is that Jesus got up and walked out. It's a complete different perspective to see it. The, the old perspective for the followers is, is he's died and all hope is lost and we don't know what to do. But the new perspective is, Scripture says that he's making all things new. Not just Israel, but he's making people new. He's redeeming people. He's pursuing people to, to present the gospel that they may have an opportunity to come to know Christ. Maybe for your old perspective is, I'm not good enough. I've never been good enough. I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to surrender that. I'm not good enough. And the new perspective you need to see is that God says He made you just the way that you are. 
and that he can change whatever it is that you're trying to change on your own or what you're trying to get rid of. God's the one that can do that, not you. Maybe your old perspective is, why do I have to go through this? Why am I having to face this circumstance in my life? Why am I having to face this sickness in my body? Or why am I having to face this situation in my family or with my kids or with my spouse or with my job? or in my community, whatever it may be. Why do I have to go through this? And that's your old perspective, but the new perspective, and when Christ gives us, is that we know that He will carry us through it and show us how great He is in our life to see us through whatever trial it is that you and I may be facing. Maybe your old perspective is, I'm all alone and nobody cares. And the new perspective is that Scripture says that He'll never leave you or forsake you, and He'll walk with you through every valley in every place that you go. Maybe your old perspective this morning is everything's falling apart around you. And the new perspective is, as you realize he's holding you up with his righteous right hand. And he's there to see you through it. The old perspective for the people we find in this scripture is they're looking in, from a fleshly perspective. We hoped that he would be the one that would do this. They were completely missing out on what God was doing because what he was doing was so much bigger than what their limited view was. And maybe some of you have got a limited view this morning of what God's doing and you need a new perspective and Christ makes all things new when we surrender to him and therefore you need a new perspective on life and, and see what it is that God's doing. And along with that, you can trust his timing when you have a new perspective and trust in what is happening. Look at verse 12 with me. And in verse 12, after they had shared with everyone there, the scripture says that they didn't believe. Many of the people there didn't believe it was like nonsense. It's like, it just don't, this don't make sense what you're saying. But in verse 12, Peter, however, got up and the scripture says that he ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying there by themselves and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Now, I want you to picture this for a moment with me everyone in the room heard the same story that he's not there and then vision the vision that they saw and what had happened but yet they didn't believe but but Peter yet is the one that got up and he ran out of the room he ran to the tomb to see for himself and I can't help but think with Peter that this that Jesus before he went to the cross what did he tell him he said you're gonna what deny me how many times three times you're going to deny me three times. And he's like, Lord, that will never happen. I, I will always be by your side. And, and what we find through Scripture is, is Jesus was right. Peter denied him three times. And could it be that when Peter, hold, Peter heard that story and thought, wait a minute. He was right about one thing. I denied him when I said I never would. Could it be that his promise is true? And that he is alive. And the scripture says he ran and then he wondered about what had happened. Trying to put it all together about what God was doing in that moment. And you must be willing to trust his timing and, and what God's doing in your life. And, and sometimes I know we wonder, but we have to trust and, and walk through that and have that new perspective for his timing and what he's doing. And not only with his timing, but, but, but number two is this, is, is that you know that he's given us, he has given us a new hope. And I know maybe some of you in here this morning need that. You need a new hope in life. You need a new hope with your situation. You need a new hope with your circumstances. Maybe you feel hopeless and you need a new hope. Look at verse 30 and 31 with me. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. This is where their hope was restored. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. Jesus was with them, and they didn't even know it. Jesus was in their presence, and they had no idea. Jesus was walking with them on the road to Emmaus, and they felt alone, and they were mourning over the death of their dreams, and what they thought was going to happen. And I want you to see this. During their suffering, God was nearby the entire time. During their mourning and, and of, of the death of Christ and the dreams of what they thought was going to happen, 
Jesus was there with them the entire time that they were mourning. He was there the entire time that they were struggling. And he allowed their pain to continue. As you, as you read through that, he allowed their pain to continue until their own desires no longer held them captive. When they released their own desires and got their own desires out of the way, and as Jesus was talking to them, it began to reveal to them who he was and being reminded there again to remember what Christ has done. And they were given a new hope. And then in verse 33, here's what the scripture says in verse 33. It says, they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them and assembled together. And then they begin to say, it's true. What, what, we, what you said is true. We've, we've, we've experienced it with our own eyes. We've, we've seen him. He, he is alive. But I want you to see this. When their hope was lost, Scripture says that they were walking away from Jerusalem. They were abandoned in the faith. They were, they were leaving because they felt like it was all over. They felt hopeless. And they were walking back home. And they were leaving Jerusalem. Maybe some of you here this morning, you feel like walking away. Maybe you've thought about walking away from church or, or walking away from your family or walking away from your spouse or walking away from your job or walking away from a situation, whatever it may be, and you feel hopeless and you're ready to walk away because you feel like your dreams have ended, they've been crushed, and there's no hope of a future. Scripture says that when Jesus revealed himself, says their eyes were open, they were given new hope, and as a result, they got up and they went back to Jerusalem. They got back on track. They went where they needed to be. Maybe some of you have lost hope. You've begun to doubt. And you're on the path to walk away from what God is wanting to do in your life. Look to the person beside you and tell them, don't lose hope. Tell somebody. Somebody needs to hear it from your words. Don't lose hope. Matthew 28, 20, Scripture says, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. And he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Don't lose hope. My prayer is that some of us will get back on the path and head back to Jerusalem this morning. That we'll get back and head where we need to be and stop running from God. Stop running thinking that all hope is lost. Some of you need new hope this morning. Some of you need a new perspective. And that only comes from a new relationship with Christ and surrendering your heart to Him and repenting of your sins, confessing Him as Lord, and giving your life to Jesus. Verse 28. It says, As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if He was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. And so he went in to stay with them and Jesus had fellowship with them in their home. Maybe Jesus is passing by this morning for some of you. And you need to invite him in. You need to open your doors of your heart, let down your guard. You need to invite him into the table. You need to invite him home with you. Not just leave him here for a place that you come and worship, but that you take him home. God, would you come into my life? God, would you save my family? God, would you enter into my home? Would you enter into my work? And everywhere you go, that you would take him with you. Because the scripture says that he'll never leave or forsake you. Maybe some of you need a new perspective, and that new perspective starts with surrendering your life to Him, realizing that there's more to live than just for this world. With every head bowed and every eye closed, Scripture says they got up and went to Jerusalem to declare everything that they had saw, everything that had happened. Maybe you're here this morning and you've heard those stories about what Christ can do. You've heard those stories about what God's doing. And this morning is a morning that maybe Jesus is passing by. Will you let him in? Will you let him in? Invite him in. Invite him into your life to come home with you today, to transform your heart, to transform your family, 
so you can be the man of God you need to be and the husband and the wife that you need to be that you can be the, the child that you need to be the student that you need to be would you let him in give you a new hope a new perspective a new life would you let him in with no one looking around we've already had two this morning in first service surrender their life to Jesus and we want to give that opportunity again with no one looking we want to be able to connect with you if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and maybe you didn't expect to encounter that this morning you just you just walked in to be a part of church and be a part of fellowship and maybe Jesus is passing by and your heart right now is being tugged in your life and you know that you need to make a decision with no one looking around if that's you we want to be able to pray with you we want to be able to rejoice with you and you know that you need to surrender your life to Jesus to confess him as Lord repent of your sins doesn't make it easy doesn't make it everything just be perfect in your life you still go through the valleys but you know that he's walking with you with no one looking around, if that's you on a count of three, would you just raise your hand so we can rejoice with you? One, two, three. If that's you, just simply raise your hand so we can celebrate with you this morning. We want to rejoice in what God is doing. Thank you for raising your hands. I see your hands. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for raising your hand. I see it. Any others? I don't want to miss it. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Would there be others in here that would say, Pastor Benji, I've given my life to Christ, but, but I continue to fall back to my old perspectives. Uh, I see things from a worldly perspective sometimes and I lose sight. And maybe this morning I've been reminded and who I need to trust and, what, and how I need to walk and what I need to do. And I've been reminded this morning that I need to change my perspective to what God wants to do. Would there be anybody in here this morning that would say, that's me and my perspective has been changed. Uh, it's been brought back where it needs to be. You can go ahead and raise your hand. We want to rejoice with you as well. Thank you. Hands everywhere. Father, we celebrate what you're doing. God, we give you the glory for the new life that has been brought in this place, for people that have been transformed and given their life to you. God, we rejoice with that. We also rejoice with those that's perspective has been changed. Lord, we get so caught up in the things of this world, and we get so blinded by things that are happening. But Lord, thank you that you're a God of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness that you give us, that we can be restored, that we can be made right, that we can continue on the journey that you have for us as we celebrate together, God, as we walk on this journey together. We thank you for what you're doing and for you allowing us to be a part of it. Lord, may we take you with us. May we take you with us to our house, to our, our occupation, to our place, where we go, God, and would we tell others about what you've done here as we rejoice. Thank you for saving us from the inside out as we continue on this journey together. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, can we celebrate for a moment? We had life change happen again this morning. Come on, let's stand to our feet. times I feel it's the young mercy remains should I stumble again so I'm caught in your grace everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame yeah Say your will, your will above all else, till my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. 
Your glory goes beyond all things. Yeah. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and peace become my embrace. To love you from the inside out. We sing your will above all else. Still, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Let the last thing. Shall we know all things? Never wanting your glory goes beyond all faith, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out. My soul cries out. Justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. We say, My heart and my soul, I give you control, consume me from the inside out. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine with all its rays. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all faith and the cross. Consume me 
from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from inside out. And the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And thank God for the new life that we're able to celebrate in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you to be seated. Amen. I'm Ronnie Foster, the executive pastor here at Journey Church, and we're so glad that you chose to come and worship God with us again today. Uh, many of you have indicated that you have trusted Christ as your Savior, as a forgiver of your life's sins. We want to invite you to take a connection card that you'll find in the seat. And if you'll indicate on there that you have made a spiritual decision today, we want to rejoice with you and partner in your new walk with Christ and being a new creature in Jesus Christ and celebrate with you what God is doing in your life. If you'll fill that out, give us your contact information. Somebody will contact you and talk a little bit more about this life-changing decision that you have made in your life. Let me remind you of a couple of events that you'll see on the screen behind me. Um, the Jeremy Camp concert that's coming up in the next few weeks, and also a uh, student ministry or a youth event, Contagious, which will be right here at the Worship Center at Journey. Um, Austin will be leading worship for that event, and then there's also a speaker for that. We we'll encourage all you guys, all you younger guys, to come and take part in that. And then Wednesday nights, we have, of course, our Refuge Student Ministry, which will be at 5 o'clock. And then the college ministry will take place at 714 and be a great time of fellowship, a great time of worship here. Pastor Benji will bring a message and also a worship team will lead the college kids and singles in worship on that night for 714 college and singles ministry. Also, I want to also call your attention to our website, embracethejourney.tv. You'll find a world of information about who we are about what God has called us to, the vision of Journey Church. And also, you'll find out about discipleship here around Journey. If you'll click on the picture that says discipleship, you'll see the different discipleship groups that are available. One of the groups that I want to call your attention to is family discipleship. If you'll click on the picture that says family discipleship, it'll lead you to another page. You'll be able to click on a link each week and get an updated family Bible study. And we want to encourage you to take the opportunity to meet with your family during the week and go through this brief Bible study and prayer time and have a good time of Bible study and devotion and prayer time with your family. Again, go to our website, click on the picture of discipleship, then click on the picture for the family discipleship group, and you'll be able to find out a little bit more about that. Also, I want to ask you as you leave today, if you're here today for the first time, second time, you were not here last Sunday, we want to ask you to fill out a connection card and give us your information, your contact information. Um, and as you leave the building today, if you'll drop it in the basket by the door, or if you've made a spiritual decision today, if you also will indicate that on the connection card and drop it in the basket, we would appreciate it so very much. Also, the very first Sunday in October will be another great Sunday at Journey. We'll be able to celebrate together in Believer's Baptism. If you have recently given your heart to Christ and you need to follow the Lord in Believer's Baptism, we'd like to encourage you to check that box and somebody will contact you in the next few days and weeks coming up to the first Sunday in October. Again, want to encourage you to go out and live like Jesus would have you to. Love God and love one another serve your fellow man. We love you and God bless you.